Hey guys, what's going on? So I've been playing Honkai Impact 3 for about a month now. I actually started on the 29th last month, so it's been a little bit less than a month, technically speaking, but close enough. So today I'm basically just going to be sharing what I've learned throughout my month of playing. And probably the single most important thing that I've learned is that gold is a very, very precious commodity. So I'm going to spend a minute or two talking about why I believe that is why it is. And this may very well have to do with the fact that I am a very fast leveler. You'll be wanting to raise your Valkyries, of course, to your captain level. So I have my three main ones here, uh, Divine Prayer, Scarlet Fusion, and Snowy Sniper. And I recently came across a Shadow Dash review that really made me want to invest in her, along with you guys saying on my uh, Valkyrie farming video not to ignore Shadow Dash because she is actually very good. And uh, okay, so I'm finally converted. The problem is, so I got her to level 57. I recently got to level 58, so whatever. But skills are insanely expensive when you want to grab a character and just start using them. Uh, because besides having to buy skill points when you want it immediately, you would also have to buy gold, which I've actually done twice today. I don't recommend that because you can get gold. But besides that, there aren't many places to get gold. So basically, the little takeaway from this is to use it very wisely. I would recommend pretty much knowing the three or four Valks you're going to start with and only invest in them. Because uh, as you can see here, I have one, two, three, four, five, mm, six, seven, eight, about eight Valks at a high level, 50 or above, and most of them have most of their skills done. I mean, just one point costs 15.6 thousand. That's crazy. Not to mention this is with a discount going on, it's it's usually 19.5 thousand. So besides raising Valks, of course, to your own level, that gets very expensive, mainly with the skills. Um, of course, four star weapons. I know this is just an event weapon, but I don't have anything better. So this, for example, even though it's only at its two little stars right now, was extremely expensive to upgrade, along with this kind of random stigmata Fuxi here. Uh, she's also a natural four star stigmata, extremely expensive to upgrade. So on one hand, I would almost recommend to stay away from these event weapons, especially early on until you have the extra gold. I invested way too much in, into this weapon and I think one other weapon, let's uh, try and look. Yeah, this gluttony uh, scimitar, whatever the hell, this has three stars, so it was even more expensive to upgrade and I don't even use her. And when I would use Shadow Dash, I would probably raise uh, this one, Void Blade. So that was pretty much just a huge chunk of gold practically wasted. There could be a point at which I want to take two Raiden Maids with me and then one could take the Void Blade and when one can take that one I raised, but you know. If there is a point like that, it's not going to happen for a while and that's when I should have used the resources, not now. And same goes for upgrading pretty much everything. You have to be very careful with your gold because there's no real way to farm it. I mean, you get a little bit here and there just from doing stages. You get a bit from your base, depending on how high you've raised your refinery. I even caved and bought the weekly crystal and coins bundle because it had 500k gold in there. And I don't even care about the crystals at this point. It's all about the gold. I mean, naturally, crystals are nice as well, but that 500k gold couldn't resist that. Of course, you can go to the beginner's guide and uh, click I want more coins, and they're going to offer you some suggestions as well. You get some from achievements. You can uh, exchange crystals for coins, which I'm sure most people wouldn't recommend, at least past the 10 crystals for the daily mission, because after your first purchase it already goes to 20 crystals, and eh, 20 crystals for 27k, I don't think that'll get you that far. Of course, just running storyline gives you gold, base production like I said, and, and the weekend coin event gives you some as well. But yeah, the main takeaway is that gold is a very precious commodity, and be careful with it. The next thing I learned, I learned quite early on actually, and that is that w whether you're doing one time summon or a 10 time summon, uh, it doesn't matter. Most people prefer to go uh, one at a time because then you can stop as soon as you get uh, a rank Valkyrie or a four star Stigmata or a four star weapon. Because for every 10 pulls, you are guaranteed either an a rank Valkyrie or, you know, Stigmata weapon, blah, blah, blah. You could potentially get an a rank Valk or a four star weapon in a shorter amount of pulls but once you get the premium drop chances are it won't happen for another 10 so that's when people typically stop also another thing I learned is that focus is generally much better than standard because all but the s rank Valkyries are farmable and none of these like four star weapons and Sigmata are I think even some s rank Valkyries like Moonbeam will become farmable later on in the game but on the other hand so will four star weapons and I've heard I think they were called God Keys, they will become available as well, and they are better than a lot of the 
other four star weapons in Gacha. So ultimately, if you're playing this for a certain character you really want, like Dimensional Break or Blood Rose, then I would say go for Standard or wait until they're in an expansion supply where you have a higher chance of getting them. Some don't play this only to be the most efficient, strongest you can possibly be. Some just like the characters. Looks like we got a new raid up here. Seems to be focused on Bronya. I've uh, got the fifth sacred relic, sun oh, and sunfire greatsword, and the Cleopatra set. Is this worth throwing crystals at? Make sure to leave your comment down below. Also, something exciting is that it looks like uh, Yai Yay Sakura is going to be coming to global. Uh, there's going to be an event for her. Looks like we'll be getting something called Miko Memories. Also some other cool stuff like the uh, Trials of Sin here. But yeah, we'll get into all that stuff tomorrow. So back on track. Another thing I learned is that leveling up quickly has diminishing returns if you're not willing to put in the crystals in supply and get the actual good things you need for your Valkyries. Once you get up to like level 35, I guess I would say, I think you've unlocked most of the important things. I know there are some extra daily missions you get at a certain level, and I believe that's either 30 or 35. And so once you get there, I wouldn't rush it too much. Most days I still am refreshing uh, 60 stamina for 50 crystals because I just have so many Valk shards to farm, and I'm just kind of like that. I know it's not as efficient, but I just kind of want to play and farm some Valk shards, so <laughs> whatever. That's how I choose to use my crystals. And as a result of that, of course, I level up pretty quickly, which does kind of put me in a hard spot if we loop around to the gold problem. I'm impatient. I want to raise this Void Blade to you know, whatever it takes. I know there are better weapons for Shadow Dash, but I think it's good enough, especially considering this is the only gacha four-star weapon I have. I want to get some decent stigmatas for her. I want to finish off her skills, but all of that is impossible <laughs> without gold. So unfortunately, my only option is to be patient. So I try not to make that same mistake. Another thing I learned from some commenters uh, is that Scarlet Fusion, well, I really like her, so I'm still farming for her, basically, but apparently in future content she'll be much easier to farm than she currently is, and that I should rather focus on the other Valkyries. Divine Prayer, I'm always focusing on every day anyway, and Yamabuki Armor, I never cared about, but apparently I should be going for her as well, because she'll be important later. You should also, of course, be using your stamina wisely, and not just going into any random stage. Always have a goal for the stage you're in. I would say, in the current state of global, what you should should mostly be doing is going for Valkyrie fragments. Of course, clearing new stages when they come available is never a bad idea. You always get some special guaranteed drops, as well as uh, more experience from the missions tab here. Gives you a little bit of gold as well. <laughs> Another thing I learned much later than I should have is that vice leaders have five chances to apply for new commissions, whereas everyone else, so just the members, only have one. Uh, this is an important point if you're a guild master or if you're a member and the guild master doesn't know this, uh, you should always try and have your four vice leaders set so that you'll have more total commissions for other people to choose from. Speaking of which, we are currently full in Crusaders, but we do have members getting removed from time to time for not fulfilling the requirements or even getting close. At the moment, all I can really do is check them and if they have two digits by the end of the week, I'm gonna kick them. If they have three digits and it's a low digit, I can never be sure if it's actually 1000 or 100 because of a bug I talked about in the Armada Guide video. So again, I really hope to see this fixed at one point, but until then, it's kinda hard to justify kicking someone unless you're 100% sure they're just not pulling their weight. Also something that you should be working on is your co-op level. I've heard this will be important later on. I'll be honest, since I am only co-op level 5, I haven't been doing it as much as I should be doing it, and that's probably because I don't even know what for besides some little tiny buffs that you get. I'm not sure if in the other servers like Japan and Southeast Asia and all of that if they actually know or if it's just known that it will eventually become important. But I think that's pretty much it. Sort of off the top of my head. There are perhaps some other little things thrown about but I think those are the most important ones. If there's anything like that that you'd like to share make sure to drop a comment down below. Uh, you guys have actually helped me a lot learn more about the game and I'm sure you've helped other people uh, with them reading your comments. So any important little advices are always welcome. Also while you're down there if you could take a second to leave a like on this video you will have my eternal gratitude attitude. That's completely different than what I usually say, but it's okay. Thanks guys, as always, for watching, and until next time.